good over here. It's not the same. You don't have to watch your back like you used to when you was out in that world. People who say they were on your side, they weren't really on your side. When the devil was offering you all of this stuff, all he wanted to do was to get you out on that ledge far enough so he could push you off. He wanted to destroy you while he had you out there. But the mercy of God did not allow you to get too far, too close to the edge where that final push would push you over. The mercy of God, he put his rope on you and when you felt like you were falling, you, you, you felt a Velcro, amen, attaching that came through you and it grabbed hold to you and before you could fall over the cliff, you felt something go zip and you were sitting in the presence of Jesus and Lord, forgive me. Good morning. Welcome to the broadcast, the online broadcast of the Unity Christian Church. My name is Pastor Smith Atwater, and I greet you in that matchless and precious name of Jesus the Christ. It is my prayer that you have uh, enjoyed your week as much as you can under the present situation and conditions, but we must still acknowledge who's really in control, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Uh, we want to have a word of prayer before we go any further. Thank God for all things and the little clip that you saw coming in. It's good to have some current pictures, some reminder pictures, just some things to just to get us started on this beautiful Palm Sunday. So let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for another day that you have made. We thank you for the opportunity to be your servants and to be used by you. Now, Lord, I pray that you would send a word today. We need to hear from you and you alone. And we give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, it is so. Amen. Amen. Well, on today, as I said, this is Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday is the beginning of what we call the Holy Week. So this is a week that is truly a blessing for the believer. If it had not been for this week, we would still be in our sins. And it is so sad for those who have not really tapped into what Jesus has done for us. If the whole world that's dealing with COVID-19 could also understand that Jesus is in control of this whole world, this is his world. And he is sending messages, he's doing things, he wants us to turn to him. But if the whole world could acknowledge what Jesus has done right now, then they would not have to worry about where they will be forever. But we who are the believer, God has given us a responsibility to share with others who he is. So as we begin our talk on today, our time on today, let's go into the word of the Lord. If you'll be so kind, if you'll open your Bibles with me to the gospel of St. John, we spoke last week from this same gospel, St. John. But today we want to go to St. John chapter 12, and we want to read those scriptures that you saw coming in. St. John chapter 12, verse 9, and then verses 12 and 13. And I will be reading from the NASB translation, the Gospel of St. John, chapter 12, verse 9, and verses 12 through 13. The word of the Lord says, the large crowd of the Jews then learned that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he raised from the dead. Let's go down to verse 12. On the next day, the large crowd who had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took the branches of the palm trees and went out to meet him and began to shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. 
Today, as we meditate on what this Holy Week is all about, we understand that the Lord did not just come and did not leave us with evidence of who he is. He did not just show up and then say, you all figure it all out for yourselves. No, the Lord did some things. Everything that he did, it, it was intentional. And God is still doing things today that's intentional. We must take the time as we do when we study his word to also to find out what is the intention that he wants us to glean from these days and these times. But today we are looking at continuing really with what we started on last week, where we were looking at how Jesus had so much uh, sympathy and empathy for the people that he even wept at the death of Lazarus. But we knew that he was going to raise him. So Jesus has now raised Lazarus from the dead. And there were witnesses who observed what Jesus did. So the topic that we want to talk to you from today on this Palm Sunday, we want to talk to you uh, about living evidence. Living evidence. The Gospel of John. John is that disciple who he described himself as the one who Jesus loved. Now, it's good to be able to testify to let somebody know that uh, Jesus loves me. It takes us back to that little song that the children used to sing and that we used to sing growing up. It's that old. Uh, Jesus loves me. Yes, I know why. Because the Bible tells me so. John is the fourth gospel writer in the chronological order here. And he's letting us know that he's an eyewitness of some things that Jesus has actually done. So uh, in verse 43 and 44 of John chapter 11, just one chapter before chapter 12, John 11, 43 and 44, we find these two verses. The Bible says, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The man who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Now, we find something very interesting right here is that when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, Lazarus came forth in the same condition in which they had buried him. People sometimes would try to bury you in one condition in life, but they don't realize that when you find Jesus, you will be raised up. Although you might look the same on the outside, Jesus told them, look, he looks like the same dead man. He's still bound up. But then he said, unbind him and let him go. The Lord is here today to unbind us and to let us go. So Lazarus is uh, evidence that the chief priests, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, no one could deny the miracle of Lazarus being raised from the dead. So Lazarus is a walking evidence. He is a witness. So when we define the word evidence, how is evidence defined? Evidence is defined as the available body of facts or information indicating whether a belief or proposition is true or valid. Evidence is anything that you see, experience, read, or are told that causes you to believe that something is true or has really happened. Evidence is obtained from documents, objects, or witnesses. So when we look at this, you know, very general uh, definition of evidence is something that we can all relate to. But God is looking for evidence from his church, from his believers, from his people. God wants our lives to be evidence to others that he has done something to unbind us from what the enemy thought he already had us wrapped up within. So when we look at what's taking place here, let's go into John chapter 12. Very briefly here, we want to take a look at uh, just a couple of scriptures, and then we'll share a thought, and our time will be just about up. But in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 12, 
verse one and two, we find these words. Jesus, therefore, six days before the Passover, now came to Bethany where Lazarus was. Lazarus has been raised from the dead. Everyone sees Lazarus. He's the evidence of the awesome power that the Lord Jesus possessed. Where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they made him a supper there, and Martha was serving, but Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table with him. Here he is on full display. No one can deny that he was dead, but no one can deny that he's alive. No one can deny who used to know you, if you have been made alive again, that this is not the same you who used to live. The Lord Jesus is still in the business of raising up the dead. He raised me up and I pray that he has already raised you up. But there's one thing that we have to be obedient about today. There are so many other people who are still bound up and dead, spiritually dead, walking around dead, just like Lazarus was. So out of love, God wants us to do our very best to ensure that they remain here long enough to hear truth, to receive truth, to use us to be the bearer of truth. God is concerned about others in addition to ourselves. That's why we have embraced so fully the concept of social distancing. We never know how strong we are. And, and, and it's so interesting, the different stats that are coming out now. Uh, before it's all over, it's estimated that 50% of the people would have contracted somehow and could be a possible carrier of the coronavirus. But because of our constitution, because our make, of our makeup, many of us might not even show any symptoms. But it does not mean that we are not still an active carrier. So although we don't know what's happening with this little tiny virus, you know, it's still up to us to be concerned out of love that we are not uh, causing anyone else any difficulty. And the way they are trying to get this message through now, initially, you know, uh, the government officials were saying things like, well, you know, it's really no big deal. You just keep doing pretty much what you're doing. You don't need masks. You don't need this. You don't need that. And people were pretty much ignoring the message. They were not embracing it fully. Now, if you notice, the tone has shifted. Now the tone is saying, listen, you need to be concerned about infecting other people. So you wear masks, not because you might become infected, but if you are a carrier, uh, you don't want to infect someone else. So I spiritually now, out of love, we want to be sure that we have as many opportunities as possible to reach out to the lost. And so if they are not here, we can't reach them. God wants us to give them this word. So Lazarus is a living, walking example of evidence. And as he is sitting at the table, people are coming to see Lazarus. So let's go down now to verse number nine. Still, chapter, still same chapter, St. John chapter 12, verse nine. And if I didn't say it before, I'm reading from the NASB. The word says in verse nine, the large crowd of the Jews then learned that he was there, he being Jesus. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he raised from the dead. They wanted to see this. And when people can see some evidence, it, you know, it infuses them uh, with interest. It infuses them with belief. It changes their outlook. So when they see Lazarus actually being here, now they're getting on the Jesus bandwagon. And this is what the authorities were so afraid of. Verse 10, but the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and we're believing in Jesus. Now, we don't know what actually happened, how long Lazarus lived after Jesus was crucified. But if we think these chief priests uh, could be so emboldened after uh, Jesus had been crucified, they were trying to you know, remove all forms of evidence that Jesus was who he was. I'm sure Lazarus had to be very careful because they had a bounty out on Lazarus as well. 
So the enemy can see the same evidence that we see. He sees the power of God in operation in your life. He sees you being that great example for your family. But then for some reason, it seems like your children just don't want to act right. He tries to come at you through them. But prayer is still the answer. We who are the believer, we who are the chosen of God must understand that it's not the big things that would trip you up. In the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15, there's a, a scripture that says, catch the foxes for us, the little foxes that are ruining the vineyards while our vineyards are in blossom. See, if you break that scripture down, now we know uh, the Song of Solomon is a romantic Bible book. It talks about love and how to love and what true love is all about. But Solomon and the wisdom that he possesses is intertwined in here. See, the little foxes are different from the big foxes. The big foxes will come at you and they will be right in your face and you will see them. There goes a fox. The little foxes come in. They are undercover. And they would not just grab the fruit, but they would actually damage the root of the vines so that it had much trouble. Sometimes it just totally died and could not, uh, you know, regenerate. It could not replenish. It could not bear forth any more fruit. The little foxes in our lives are the things that we really have to be on the alert for. Oh, I can just, you know, pass on doing what's right this time. If I take it, nobody will care. Oh, I can talk about her this time. There's nobody on the line but us. I can gossip. I can, you know, slander. I can do a lot of things this time, but I won't do it anymore. But the more comfortable that you get doing the little things, it can then lead to you doing something that's a little larger until you can actually spiritually damage people so much until they will say, I don't ever want to go to church anymore. I don't ever want anything to do with any of these uh, people who say they are Christians because of how they treated me. So it's the little things in our lives that, that we think, you know, uh, uh, there's no big deal. Look at what's happening now. Once again, with COVID-19, when I was young, and I never thought that uh, we would live to see 2020. Back during the early 60s, there was this Oh, man, between the United States and the Soviet Union or Russia, they were enemies trying to develop the most powerful nuclear weapons. Each co uh, country was in an arms race. And so the thing that happened, as most of you who have studied history know, when the U.S. ships put a blockade around Cuba, it appeared as if that was going to be the end of the world because everyone knew that the U.S. possessed these nuclear weapons. Everyone knew that Russia possessed these nuclear weapons. They were not hidden. And the defense was to develop something that uh, you could you know, see them coming and try to shoot them down out of the sky before they could get to you. But even if you hit them, the fallout from that. The radio, radioactive fallout from that would have just been catastrophic. So we were mentally, I was uh, at the age of about 12 years old, mentally preparing myself for death, thinking that this was going to be the end. But then things happened because everybody knew what the weapons were. So they were able to come and talk about it and say, well, you know, we see how powerful these weapons are. So those are the things that were right in front of their faces. But these little foxes, this little virus, this little COVID-19 virus, Corona virus is so small that no one saw it coming. And it wasn't uh, being taken seriously until it was too late. Now we are trying to, you know, stop it and to keep and to flatten that curve of people who are becoming infected and death because the little fox, the little virus got in there and destroyed and has caused a worldwide pandemic. Nuclear weapons couldn't do that. But the little things can that we don't see, but God sees and he knows all. So finally here, when we uh, get to chapter number uh, to still John 12, verse 12, this is where this day is all about. On the next day, after they had this feast for Jesus, where Lazarus was there and Mary and Martha were there and Martha was serving, by the way, this time without complaining like she did the first time. But verse 12 says, on the next day, 
the large crowd who had come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was a, a coming to Jerusalem, took the branches of the palm trees and went out to meet him and began to shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. See, these people were so emboldened now because they had witnessed and they had evidence about the power of Jesus, how he raised up the dead, how he had fed, you know, over 5,000, 7,000 with a few little fish and a few loaves of bread. They realized that this Jesus is someone who can lead us into battle. See, Hosanna means say now. They were not thinking about a spiritual salvation. No, they were thinking about a political reformation so that they could be free from Rome right then. They wanted this type of King Jesus who could raise up the army if the Romans killed the, uh, the Israeli or uh, the Jewish soldiers that Jesus had the power. He could raise them back up again. If the Romans cut off their food supply, Jesus could feed them because he was a miracle worker. So they wanted to bring Jesus in for their own purpose. They wanted to bring Jesus in to be the type of king that they wanted. But Jesus came in riding on a donkey. And not only he was not riding on a real mule, kings would ride on uh, mules, you know, when they came in peace and they would ride on horses when they came for warfare. But Jesus in and in, riding on a donkey to fulfill what was prophesied about him in Zechariah. See, Zechariah had already said in Zechariah 9 and 9, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, even on a coat the foal of a donkey. Jesus didn't even come in on a grown mule. He came in to fulfill the scripture of Zechariah 9 and 9. He came in on the coat of a donkey, which means he was coming in very humble. He was not coming to fight, but the people were so enamored with some of the other things in their own view, they missed who Jesus was. The question today is, oh, with all of this evidence of the love that Jesus is showing to us, with all of the second and third and fourth and fifth chances that the Lord Jesus gives to us. Are we missing who he is? Are we missing the evidence of who Jesus is? This Jesus is awesome. He is the one who has caused time to be shifted. He is the one who has caused, amen, the world to start marking calendars based on him. B.C., before the time of Christ. And for people who just don't like that, they call it BCE, before the common era. Common era means after his birth. Amen. And before common era means before he came. And I know Dominique, which is AD, is Latin, which means in the year of the Lord. We have marked time. We have split time from before Jesus was born until after Jesus was born. Who else has given us this type of evidence? The world is testifying without even realizing and accepting that Jesus is the difference maker. And when he came into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, the day that we remember right now, the beginning of Holy Week, it's the beginning of our celebration to remember the victory. We are no longer defeated. And the devil don't want you to acknowledge that or to accept that. That's why the Jewish leaders said, when the people came to see Lazarus, I'm going to back up on you as these last scriptures and we're getting ready to close. In John 12 and 10, but the chief priest planned to put Lazarus to death also because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and were believing in Jesus. And then go down to verse number 19 in that same chapter. It says, so the Pharisees said to one another, now they're arguing, the devil is fussing with himself. You see that you are not doing any good. Look, the world has gone after him. What a prophecy, the devil can't stop it. Whosoever will, it's open for you to come. It's open for you to accept the evidence. And for the believer, we must be the evidence to those who don't know him, that Jesus can change lives, that Jesus can make the old new 
that he can make the dead to walk again. We were spiritually dead men walking, but now if we are true believers, not playing church, so you got that folks still just walking through the door. That folks might even be just listening to sermon after sermon. But if you don't allow this word to penetrate you and to change you, then you have you're still bound. You have not been released. The door is open, but you're still bound. Oh, well, let this word unbound you so you can walk and be free. God wants to let all of us go. Whosoever will come to him today. If you are listening to this message and you're not saved, and you realize that you need to change your life. You need to give the Lord Jesus you, all of you, right where you are. If you want to be saved, if you want to become that new creation in Christ Jesus, it's not that difficult. You just need to uh, believe what you're about to pray in your heart from the inner man. You need to believe this because if you believe it in your heart, what you confess in your heart is going to manifest itself in your actions and in your life. Words by themselves do not bring forth the fruit. It does not change you. But when you really are convicted in your heart and accept this hope that the Lord has given to us through Jesus, you will be saved. So if you are there today, we want to give you this opportunity on Palm Sunday to give your life to the Lord Jesus. So just bow your head right where you are. And pray this prayer after me if you desire to give your life to Jesus. Just say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. Please forgive me for all of my sins. You didn't have to do it, but you did. And you did not remain dead. When you were raised from the dead, spiritually, I am raised also. I am no longer dead. I am alive with you. The things that I know that are wrong, I will no longer do. The things that I know that's right through your power and your strength, that will I do. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Live in my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. And I accept you in my life forevermore. And I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. If you pray that prayer, believe it. You don't have to go to any classes. You don't have to be convinced or have a seal of approval by anyone else. You just need to walk this walk and believe that what you have just prayed, that the Lord Jesus has heard you and that he has given you all things. Now, uh, if you please can support and will support rather the Unity Christian Church in our ministry during this time, we are yet giving. We are yet want to continue to be a blessing to many organizations and individuals. And we can't do that without your support. And we still have things that we have to you know, continue to maintain. So if you would only be faithful in your giving, and if you would like to give to this ministry, the information should be on the screen. But let me just go ahead and go over it with you. You can go to our website at unitychristianchurch.org and there's a tab uh, that says online giving. Or you can go directly. Easy Tithe is the platform that we use for our online giving. Uh, or you can go directly to their site. And that is the second URL that you see on the chart. It is https easytithe.com slash UCC giving. Or you can give via text giving. By, by simply dialing 770-515-9799 and then input your information when prompted. And finally, there is an Easy Tithe mobile app. You can go to the store, to the Apple store, or whatever device you might have where you download uh, your software onto your smartphone and you can download that mobile app. It's Easy Tithe mobile app. And once you download the mobile app, just put input Unity Christian Church and you will find us with our address. So we pray that you will uh, be a faithful and uh, faith, yes, a faithful giver for the work that the Lord is doing. And we pray that something has been said on today that you can continue to meditate on all week long. So as we leave you on today, remember the Lord Jesus loves you and we do too. So let us pray and may God be with you in all things and never forget that the Lord is good. 
Father, as we go down from this place today, we just ask you to continue to bless your people as only you can. We ask you to take control of every circumstance, every situation. Father, we pray that there will be no lack for our first responders in terms of needs and supplies, our medical staff, doctors, nurses, CNAs, and Father, all of those who are on the front line for this pandemic. We ask that you would cover and bless them as only you can. And then, Father, I ask that you would bless your church. Put us on one accord. Let us know that social distances does not distance us from you. Father, all things we give to you. So now we give you your glory. Now we give you your praise. We thank you for the evidence that we already have through your word that you are alive. And we ask that you would use us to be the evidence that would draw someone to you. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. And it is so in his name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Until next time. God bless.